Hello and happy Saturday afternoon. I hope all of you are enjoying this beautiful semi-summer day. Actually, I'm, I'm fibbing. It's actually quite cool and cloudy, so what better of a time to carry on with the never-ending get rid of the poop smell smell project in the boat. Today, we are going back down into the bilge of the boat, but an entirely new area of the boat because it's just got to be so exciting and we got to carry on with this adventure as far as we can take it. So, today, let me just back up, take a couple of steps back, spin the camera around, and show you where I'm going now. Here we have the companionway that leads from the side cabin to the master stateroom that way, he said, pointing where the camera can see. And right beside it is, I'm going to come back to this area of the floor, so don't get discouraged, is the echoey eh, day head or VIP guest washroom. So it is equipped with, amongst other things, a toilet, a vacuum flush toilet. And as you've seen from my previous videos, I've been struggling with trying to get rid of the smells that are coming from somewhere. There's the side cabin where if you look at this video, follow this link, boop, you will see where I was down there a couple weeks ago replacing some of the poop lines with new ones because they're smelly. So as I open the floor and magically reveal our sump for the uh, um, for the washrooms and whoo when I open that lid I can smell it so anyways this sump what this sump does for those of you who are not familiar with mechanics is since this washroom and the one around the corner in our bedroom are uh, the floor level and where the toilets are mounted are lower than the actual level of the water outside the boat, the lake. Those drains uh, can't go over the side as one would traditionally have for a shower or a sink, a vanity sink. So those drains, not the toilet, but the vanity, the shower, and in that room, vanity and shower, as well as the Ford air conditioner, all dump into this little sump here which is a bit of a pain in the ass because it fills up float switch pumps it out the side and an issue that we had let me just spin this around again issue that we had up until two years ago was that this sump down here it was given off its own its own foul odor so what I did back then like I say two years ago I think it was pretty much two years ago is I, I uh, plumbed the galley sink drain over the side of the boat because that is if you can see it it's let me yeah. if you can see it it's quite a bit higher than the water level so I was able to drill a hole in the side of the boat and plumb that directly out so it's no longer going down into the sump and that was of course with doing the dishes a lot of food stuff was going down there and after a few days especially when it was really hot the sump even though it was coming on pumping out that organic material was stuck in there and it would stink and it was providing its own uh, terrible smell all, all by itself so anyways that has for the great extent been alleviated anchor girl uh, takes the lid off of this thing and washes it probably once every week week and a half and just scrubs it out so it's always fresh clean water in there and no real smell issues no smell issues for uh, as far as I'm concerned at all with that but Let's just look back downside here again at what we are looking at. Where the smell is coming from now, still, yet, is this line here is the main sewer line that's running from the toilet. And it goes down there to um, the vacuum accumulator pump because uh, the two toilets on the boat are vacuum flush and they operate under vacuum. You have to see the expression on my face. My lovely anchor girl uh, is still really displeased with the smell because we thought we had had it uh, licked and knocked off when I replaced the other little two, uh, three of the other sections of hoses between the pumps and the accumulator tanks, and that knocked down the smell tremendously. However, it's still coming from here. And when she uh, popped down earlier today to clean out the sump, 
it was that whoosh of smell so it's clearly coming from that hose and so with uh, great dexterity <laughs> and again a huge reach of my long arm as far as I could get through there uh, I was able to discover a one of those zip ties that are screwed to the structure of the boat which was holding that pipe so I was able to just 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 enough get that screw out and it feels like that hose now is loose enough that when I disconnect it at the bottom end and take the toilet out I'll be able to pull it right through get it out and replace it I got the new pipe out here sorry hose sitting waiting to go so what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna set up my GoPro camera in there and I'm going to try to film as close as I can the actual removal of the toilet so for anybody who has never done that I've attempted to do it twice <laughs> so or once already so this will be my second time and second time's the charm right so I'm gonna take that off uh, successfully I hope pull the hose out and you'll see how easy it is to take one of those toilets apart and and take it out and then uh, obviously put it back together and I'll give you a, a sniff test down down the uh, build here and hopefully we'll have some success so here comes the GoPro Hello up there. Hello down here. Okay, I've got a uh, GoPro camera running down low and Canon uh, Compact overhead. So what I've done is shut the water off. I killed the power to the pumps for the uh, toilets themselves. And now we're ready to go. I have some cleaning stuff set up here. Just as a note point is that um, I'm going to call this a 2.30 p.m. start of the project and I'll tell you how long it took to do all together. Anyways, to remove the toilet, it's a very simple procedure. First of all, the two plastic pieces that have to be removed at the base of the toilet, one is the foot pedal. It's just a cover that goes over a metal rod, as you'll see in a second. It's just two small Phillips head uh, wood screws and that's that so that slides off and out of the way I'm just going to set that in the shower stall which is conveniently located right beside where I have to work so I can pop everything in there and I'm going to place the toilet in there as well okay next we have the uh, base cover for the toilet itself and again just one single Phillips head screw take that out and then this piece magically whoa, just unfolds like that see that I'm even going to leave the screw right in there because it's not going anywhere. You can see that, that just wraps around the base. So I'll set that up here. And yes, as I've had this toilet apart twice now, I'm going to say a couple weeks ago, I took it all apart to, in an attempt to remove the, uh, the, the smell offending lime. I've uh, worked on it so much and I've cleaned it so well each time that there should be little or no um, I don't say it, overflow over the toilet. I'm going to also uh, include a link in the description as well as right here to a video that I did of replacing the toilet seal on this uh, a couple years ago. Again, we were in Georgia Bay at the time, up at beautiful and infamous uh, Henry's Fish and Chip restaurant located on beautiful Frying Pan Island in the middle of nowhere on Georgian Bay and it always seems to be the case on our holidays uh, there's a project that has to be done a little emergency repair or whatever so uh, the seal had gone on this toilet so what was happening was that this little clamshell action if you can see that from the overhead camera was not sealing properly every time it closed so uh, what happens then is, as the, as the uh, 
pressure builds in the vacuum, it starts to uh, oops. it starts to uh, whistle, and then the pump doesn't shut off because it can't build the proper vacuum. And so I replaced that because I always like to carry a spare. So, anyways, while I was talking, I was also bottom camera. You can see that there's a water line here which goes in the back of this foot valve and that was just a quarter inch uh, socket on a little quarter inch drive ratchet so loosen that off pulled that off that's why the water ran out a little bit of water that was still in line but that's uh, no worries because we are in the toilet and there is a drain in this area of the floor now next thing to take this off is there's a big stainless steel um, uh, big stainless steel hose clamp and that should be I believe a 5 16 socket so let's put that on there yes I'm just going to loosen that off that's the only thing that's really holding the uh, the toilet bowl to the base is this clamp. The hose clamp wraps around two little pieces that go on, which you're going to see in just a second. And that's all there is to it. Unlike a residential toilet, which is through bolted, there's a couple of bolts that hold the actual uh, tank to the toilet bowl. And of course, a couple of bolts that hold the bowl to the floor now you can see there's these two pieces here there's one and then there's two let's call these couplings and spin around then they come off and then when they go back together they're both labeled front and they just go like that and they'll fit around there and mate together and then the hose clamp back on there and that's all there is to it so again i'm just going to set these pieces up here out of the way the hose clamp can stay there it is not in my way i'm going to move my tools just in case there's a little bit of a gush of water this one was a little bit flush oh look at that more water is coming out anyways So I just grab the bowl and lift it off. And that's all there is to it. And oh we'll quickly get it over here into the shower stall. And there you have it. Now the toilet is off. Um, now what you can't see is the two seals that are supposed to be there. Clearly they've stuck to the bottom of the toilet. But that's okay because I'm going to show you when I put that back together in the reverse how those seals go on. Now to take the base off of the floor, there's simply four uh, bigger Phillips head screws. The just big giant wood screws, literally screwed down to the deck of the floor here. Take that off too, the hose clamp. Just next to the toilet, don't forget. these screws not too long they're maybe inch and a quarter something like that inch and a half probably but there's only been maybe three quarters of an inch that's actually screwed through the floor because the rest is buried in the base so it just takes a few turns to spin that off spin them off I should say It was just a quick reference back to that video that I said I made, um, the one that I have included the link to replace the toilet seal when I did it back up in uh, Georgia Bay a couple years ago. I think that video had something like 12,000 views, which is pretty neat, considering it's just a, another boring how to fix something on the boat, especially the toilet. How, can, how exciting could that be? But when really when you think about it, exciting or not, this is going to be one of the most important systems aboard any boat. Okay.
now we are back down into this uh, sump area and again that's the hose that we're going to take off so as you can see there's one clamp there just one Phillips screw that I'm going to take out and remove that clamp altogether. Now brace your eyes because there's going to be a little bit of jiggling here probably not too much I'll try to make this as smooth as possible and as you can see that is the hose from that toilet that we just removed going down to the accumulator tank. So okay I'm going to remove the clamp remove those uh, hose clamps and disconnect it and see where we are at so wish me luck that I can get this bloody thing out and through under the floor <clears throat> now if you can periodically hear noises in the background not quite sure how sensitive the mic is on either the two little cameras that I'm running here first of all you're going to hear you would be able to hear the squeaking noise of our uh, fenders against the dock as it is quite the windy day it was yesterday as well and like I think I mentioned quite cool out as well it's like 16 degrees Celsius or something so Fahrenheit that would be low 60s with that wind it makes it feel even cooler of course now that I'm working inside the boat with it uh, pretty much closed and well I got the sliding door open in the uh, one of the side windows in the galley open with my sweating <laughs> and my eager anticipation it feels probably a lot warmer than it actually is so anyways that's that sound and you may periodically hear some what you distinguish as music playing in the background and you would be correct because I have of course the uh, Tiki Island radio streaming radio station playing right now And if you think you can hear some Kenny Chesney playing in the background, you would be right. Just as a side note, because I'm making you watch this part of the video. <laughs> I am uh, in my 50s now, so my music of choice up until a couple years ago was rock and roll, man. I was a child of the 70s, so it was all rock music, man. And, uh, you know, saw a lot of great shows. Uh, most recent being, I think, Bob Seeger a few years ago. And that was an awesome show. Um, and, you know, ZZ Top and on and on. Super Tramp back in the day. Which is a heavy rock, but it was a good show. But anyways, uh, Van Halen back in the day when it was really the true original Van Halen and uh, David Lee Roth was actually able to do the splits without having a cardiac <laughs> but uh, the last couple years as you probably all know I've been listening to Tiki Island Radio and loving it and it's uh, island music a little bit of country in there and so here's a headbanger gone country a little bit of country almost like Donnie and Marie and what does this look like? Okay, back to the task at hand, Paul. Fudge. Anyways, what I'm going to do is take these hose clamps off. The camera's still picking that up. I'm going to get those out of the way, and then I'm going to put a bag. I got a couple of sandwich bags here. And what I'll do is just wrap one over the end and then tape it up so if there's any liquid in there I'll uh, at least be able to trap it to some degree right so I'm spilling all over the carpet because anchor girl wouldn't be happy okay so I'm gonna do that and then get back to the toilet and see if this is actually gonna move so stand by okay I've got the cameras fired up I repositioned the uh, GoPro uh, to capture the moment I haven't tried moving this since I disconnected the line down below so you can either uh, see me pulling this out and uh, being ex full of ecstatic joy or the video going suddenly black and dead because I was cursing and swearing because I couldn't get the thing out so wish me luck just move that little clip okay here we go come on here comes the cursing There we go. 
awesome. That is awesome insofar as I can get this out. And last fall, fall 2013, I started working on uh, replacing our holding tank where all of this flows into. I'm, I'm kind of, I probably put the cart before the horse that way, right? But anyways, now that I'm working in a backwards fashion towards the front of the boat, I remarked on that video that when the guys built this boat at Sea Ray, everything was done from the bottom up. We uh, visited the Sea Ray plant in the Palm Coast plant in Florida a few years ago after we bought this boat and got a grand guided tour of the facility to see where the boat was built. It's amazing to see, but uh, of course, when they build it, they more or less lay the keel for, you know, lack of a better term and then they uh they build put all their systems in place and put everything on top of it so i would imagine that uh, this was installed in much easier conditions so again just wrapping us with a sandwich bag seal it off and then wrap that up with electrical tape. So there a piece of that. Ah, yes, see there's that freaking zip tie thing I was telling you about that I couldn't get out before. Now that that's out of the way. Okay, wish me freaking luck. It's a now or never. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, that's smelly. Okay, I'm going to take this out and uh, line it up with a new hose, measure at a similar length or a little bit longer, and then uh, stick it back through and in. Wow, this is so exciting. Okay, see you when I get back. Oops. Good news is, with the help of uh, Anchor Girl, and when I say help, <laughs> I'll qualify that statement by saying, your left isn't my forward, so... Anyways, if you can see that elbow, everything is glued together. This is a PVC pipe. And now that uh, fitting just goes over the end of a debt. Oops. Almost forgot the hose glands. Yeah, this one, I'll put those on afterwards. Okay, a little bit of soapy dopey on that. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so that is back on now. That hose. You can see that. Now, you can just put the clamps on. And you're going to say to yourself, Self, why didn't he put the clamps on before he put the hose on? I'll tell you why. Because chances are my luck, those clamps would have gone whoo, do, 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 down the hose and I will not would not be able to get my arm between the hose and the hole to reach them. So it's uh, gonna be a little bit of fooling around this way, but I can get them on. So I've had that happen before. Okay now the next trick is gonna be to get this hose all the way down. And line this back up so that might take a little bit of twisting and turning and uh, strong language so I'm pulling it on the other end just to get it through down now that I'm thinking about this this is probably uh, my only option to do this as opposed to uh, bringing it up the other way yeah I would have had to clamp this base on from the top and then pull the hose back through good thing I got such long arms sometimes they come in handy Shoot. Back down in here. 
in a neat fashion without freaking anything going snapping and breaking. Wouldn't that be a frustrating experience? on the other end and get that all positioned because I cut the hose really long just to make sure I had enough room to move everything around. So I'm going to reposition myself back down into the bilge, cut that hose back and make that connection. So, Okay, so I got the base all screwed back in place. It's hooked up uh, plumbing on the other end. So now I'm just going to do everything in reverse. I'm going to grab this little clip that I put over here earlier and again, uh, hooking up the water. It's just a matter of snipping this footing. Now, just gonna set this big hose clamp back down here, just kind of out of the way nicely. And then if you recall, I was saying that we have to uh, put the seals back in, which are clearly stuck to the bottom of the toilet. So I'm gonna show you how they go. Okay, now to put this thing back together in reverse, except for the part that we missed last time when I took it off because this was sticking to the bottom of the toilet. Here is the seal, and this is a, pretty much an in-depth how to replace the toilet seal video as well, except for the removing the base part. Yeah. So this is the Teflon piece, which actually provides the seal itself for the water. And it's really easy because it's marked this side up. And that just sits in there and it lines up with this little the groove with this little piece that's sticking up and then on top of that is just a thick rubber piece and again that just kind of lines up like that too and that cushions the bowl of the seat or the bowl of, of the toilet and then that just simply just goes back on top like it did that's it sits properly now you probably notice that this is a little bit off square just because the, con the confines of this toilet, um, if it's like that, the, the user is right up tight to the wall. So I'm going to just give that little spin like that ever so slightly so that is lined up there on an angle but still a little bit more comfortable for the user. And then these pieces go back in, mark front and front, and they'll wrap around the base and they'll kind of lock in like that then you know you are uh, good to go and then once these pieces are in place and lined up then it's just a matter of uh, tightening the hose clamp back up over it again and that will be uh, that will be it for getting it back on that hose clamp right out of the way there we go so that's the one piece on that side. And then this one again, just have these pieces lined up. So they are both looking at you saying front and front and the arrows line up. And that's it. And then just tighten up this hose clamp. Put that water line back on and tighten that clamp. Okay, that's that. Now I'm going to just hook that water line back up again at the back snuggle that on tighten the clamp and check it for stability okay now the shroud can go on so we just wrap it around everything line up the two pieces and Put that wood screw back in. There, that's all nice, nice. And then the final piece is the cover for the foot pedal. So another sweaty day and another sweaty job. Uh, it is now 4.30. I started this at, uh, like I said, we called it at 2.30. It was a little bit after, but so we'll say two hours to do this job. To 
take everything apart, get the line out, put all the toilet back together. Um, so all in all, uh, you know, a serious two hours worth of effort, but uh, hopefully serious results. It already smells better to me down here, and we'll have to see what Anchor Girl says, who is standing right over there. And what do you say, honey? Thank you. It's better already, isn't it? It's better already. Yeah, you tell yourself that. <laughs> Okay, say well, thank I don't know yet. Yeah, but we're but confident. I think it's better already. Good. All right. Say thanks for watching.